This is my Honda Jazz and I fit this Civic Type R engine into the car, but I have seriously messed up. I bought the Jazz a few months back for just £800 and me and my friend Tom have been building this car in the hopes of turning our Jazz into a Jazz Type R which emulates the style of my dream white on white JDM Civic EP3. With absolutely no previous experience of doing any engine swap ever, we actually managed to fit this Civic Type our engine into the car, we got it started. Oh, yes! And we even got it driving. But I am not a qualified mechanic whatsoever and I've learned what I do know from just trial and error. And now it seems my lack of experience has really come back to bite me as I think I've made several serious mistakes when doing this engine swap, which might mean I have to redo the whole thing. Now, before I get into exactly what I've done wrong on the Jazz and potentially fixing some of those issues, I've got a load more modifications, some of which you guys suggested to me in the previous video to fit to the Jazz, to turn it into more of a Type R and to make it look even better. So the first thing I'll be fitting is this Jazz Sport instrument cluster. Now, I really did want to fit a Type R instrument cluster into the Jazz, but unfortunately, after a lot of research, that is very difficult to do. So our next best bet is the Jazz Sport instrument cluster. Now, not only does this look way better than the standard one, it also revs up to 8,000 RPM, unlike the standard one. So this makes a lot more sense for our high revving Type R engine. This one, looks, this one looks so much better, doesn't it? So much better. So much more professional. Why? I don't know why it looks tinted though, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Yes, it This does. one you can see so easy. This one's tinted. Yes. It just looks like a... That looks like a Ferrari. That looks like a Honda Jazz. <laughs> and the font Yeah, the font so just nice. gives me... The font just gives the vibes of oh, I'm driving a race car. Oh. So I've got some bad news. Unfortunately, as you can see here, the connections for the Jazzport cluster and the standard Jazzport are completely different. So my lack of research on this has really bit me in the bum. I actually haven't done any research as to whether this one is gonna work, so I suppose we'll find out. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna have to put the standard one back in and think of a plan B in terms of the instrument clusters, but we can get on with now the next mod. And there is one thing I really think our Jazz is missing. In one of the previous videos on this car, we dry ice blasted the Type R engine before installing it. And when doing so, all of the iconic red paint on the rocker cover was removed, which has really changed the identity of this engine. You see, K20 is just a name of a family of engines that Honda made. Whilst there were many different variants, the K20 family can generally be split into two different groups, the red tops and the silver tops. The silver top K20s were generally less powerful and they were built for economy and reliability. But the red top K20s represent Honda's performance division and these engines are more purpose built for horsepower and they are generally the engines that find themselves in the Type R models. So since I'm trying to make what I think a Honda Jazz Type R would have looked like from the factory, painting the cam cover wrinkled red is an absolute must. So the first step to get this painted is of course to remove it. <laughs> this is not designed to come out of this engine bay. <sighs> oh, that is so close. <laughs> what? 
So after struggling to get the rock cover off, we came to the conclusion that we had to lower the whole engine down in the bay by undoing some of the engine mounts and then the rock cover could finally be removed. And after getting our makeshift paint booth set up, we could start with all of the prep work. We began by attacking the surface of the rock cover with a pad of scotch Brite. Now not only does this help smooth the surface for the paint, but it also helps remove any residual dirt or grit. And whilst doing this, we also made sure to apply plenty of brake cleaner in order to help degrease it. Then I could start applying three heavy coats of the wrinkle red paint in a crosshatch pattern as stated on the instructions. But as you're gonna see, this didn't go to plan. So my lack of experience and knowledge with painting is really starting to show itself now. This is a terrible job. As you can see, there are loads of dribbles going down. It's just an absolute mess. And, and there's some separation here going on, which is caused by when there's grease or residual oil left on the surface. I thought I got rid of everything with the Scotch-Brite and with a brake cleaner, but clearly not. So we're gonna have to completely redo this, but I am determined to get this on the car and looking amazing in this video, so. Let's do it. So to save me from having to repaint the rocker cover for a third time if I made another mistake, I gave it to my friend Lav who is a very good painter and he'll make sure that the finish on this rocker cover is better than I could ever get it. So whilst he gets on with that, I'll be addressing our three exhaust tip situation. If you remember in the last video, we removed the Lamborghini exhaust and replaced it with this normal, less loud exhaust. But I haven't yet removed the two exhaust tips sat in the boot, which is making the rear look quite odd. So I've bought this this new boot lid to help solve this issue. So the first step to get our new boot on is of course to remove our old boot. Ow. So that is one tailgate or boot successfully removed. And here is our new one. I've managed to find one in the exact same silver as the Jazz, so it is color matched, but it is missing this little section here. So we are gonna have to swap over that section from this boot, which is also good because we get to keep this Honda badge and then we can put that onto our new boot and then get it on the car. I'm really excited to see what this looks like because I just think it's gonna be so much cleaner. So to remove the trim piece, there is one bolt behind and then a few clips you have to push through. And once you've done that, you can just pull the trim piece off. Then I had the not so fun task of trying to fit this boot all by myself. Now, removing a boot by yourself is one thing, but putting it back on is 10 times harder without another person to hold it for you. So I struggled, I was battling with cross threaded bolts and having to hold the boot up for about 15 minutes straight. But after a bit of persistence, I got there. And just a quick reminder, if you are enjoying this video, smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Liking and subscribing massively helps out the channel and by doing so, you are directly contributing to all of the future videos on the channel. So make sure to smash that like button and subscribe. So as I expected, the new boot has made a massive difference to the look of the Jazz. It looks so much cleaner now without those Lamborghini exhausts. And I know a load of you are gonna be very happy that I've done this. Um, I will also be reinstating the Type R badge, but not until the end of next week's video. And you will see why I'm leaving it until then in that video. Same goes with making this wiper delete nice and flush. Uh, again, you'll see why I'm not gonna do that right now. Um, but no, I think this is a massive improvement. But now let's go and see what our rocker cover looks like now that it's been painted properly. Do 
Just take a look at how awesome the finish is on this rocker cover. It looks amazing. You can see the wrinkle red finish on there and that is the standard OEM paint finish that would have been on these rocker covers from factory. So this looks as OEM as possible and it looks so, so good. Lav has done an amazing job with painting this. So let's get it on the car. Oh mate, that has like, that just makes a huge difference, doesn't it? <laughs> like that makes a, ma like honestly, massive difference. That looks unreal. Well, we've got everything back together in the engine bay and just take a look at how awesome this is. I am so over the moon with this rocker cover. It makes it look more of a Type R, which is obviously what we're after. And it has definitely added a lot of horsepower for sure. Um, I'm so happy with this. A lot of you guys said we needed to do this rocker cover. Now we've done it, it looks amazing. These upgrades are slowly but surely making the Jazz so much better. Now, as I mentioned in the last video, this Honda Jazz is really turning into my dream build. Every single modification that we add to it, like the engine, like the suspension, like the amazing brakes we put on there, the tires, this rocker cover, the Type R interior, I'm just falling in love with it the more stuff that we do. But as much as I love upgrading this car, I haven't really been upgrading my online safety until I heard of today's video sponsor, NordVPN. A VPN stands for Virtual Private Network, and this is your number one tool to make sure that you're being safe and secure online. A VPN does this by encrypting all of your online data so no one can steal your passwords, see your messages, or just see what you're doing online. Now, one of the most useful instances when I've used NordVPN is when I'm at a public place, like an airport or a cafe, and I've seen that beautiful free Wi-Fi, but I know the risks of free Wi-Fi because it is a gold mine for hackers. They will try and steal your information. So before connecting to that internet, I make sure to open up the NordVPN app, press Quick Connect to one of their many servers, and just like that, I am fully protected so I can use that free Wi-Fi without a care in the world. And sometimes if I want to take that extra step with my online safety, I can open up the NordVPN speciality server section and press on the double VPN, which adds two layers of encryption over my private data. So not only have I got one bulletproof shield, I've got two. So to ensure you're being safe online, click the link in the description of this video and you will get four months completely for free on a two year NordVPN subscription. So it is an absolute no brainer. But with all of that said, let's go and get the next mod fitted. Now a prominent feature on my beloved white on white EP3 Type R is the tinted privacy glass on the rear windows. So the guys from D5 Graphics have come down to help us tint the rear windows on the Jazz and also tint the taillights. Tinting is a pretty intricate process where a piece of tinted film is applied to the inside of the window using a water activated adhesive. Now you'll often see tinters applying the film to the outside of the window first and that's what the guys from D5 Graphics were doing here which is just to cut the film into the correct shape. Once that's done it can be applied inside and after a bit more wizardry the window tints were complete. Then they moved on to tinting the rear tail lights using a slightly different process and then we were finished. Now I'm gonna be completely honest here. I absolutely love the window tint on the Jazz. I think it emulates the privacy glass on the EP3 really well and it looks amazing. But I'm not really the biggest fan of the light smoke on the rear lights. I thought I'd really like it, but after seeing it on the car, I just don't think it suits it. D5 Graphics did an amazing job of the install. It's an absolutely perfect install. I just don't think it suits the car personally. Uh, so I have got something to fix this. So yeah, I've gone out and bought yet another set of taillights for the Jazz. This isn't the first, nor the second, nor the third variant of taillight I've tried. This is the fourth variant of taillight, so I'm hoping I actually like these ones. These are another set of JDM taillights, and whilst they are very similar to the old clear ones I had, the main difference is obviously this big red section, which I just think will look so much better. At this point, I could replace a set of taillights on a Honda Jazz with my eyes shut, but either way, the first step is to remove the rear bumper. The next step is to then remove the plastic piece of trim behind the 
the tail lights. And then there's three eight millimeter nuts to undo and three electrical connections to unplug. Once the new tail light was in, I could then plug back in the three electrical connections and do up the three eight millimeter nuts and finish off by putting back on the plastic trim. Then it is just a case of doing that exact same process again on the other side. That is absolutely night and day. No one can tell me that that is not a huge improvement on those tinted lights. This is exactly the look I was after. It's so Japanese. It's so fitting with the whole theme of the car. I just think the, these lights, they suit it so, so well. It took me a few attempts to get the tail lights right, but we definitely have got the right ones on there now. Right, let's see if all of the lights work. So we have our daytime running light our brake light, our right indicator, our left indicator, all seems fine, and our reverse light. Now, the next mod we've got for the Jazz is quite frankly, the biggest, best, most expensive mod we will fit to the Jazz in this video, and it is gonna completely transform the interior. This is a completely retrimmed Jazz interior and doesn't it look fantastic? We've got front door cards, rear door cards, and the party piece in my opinion, the rear seats with the black and red Alcantara. This looks so, so good. To get this final product, we essentially had to take all of these pieces out of a Jazz Sport, and then I took them up to Nottingham to Lewis at Project 7 Customs, where he got all of the gray material that's kind of on the inserts of the standard Jazz Sport interior, and he replaced that with the red Alcantara that you can see now, and it just looks so good. So let's get this fitted. <laughs> So as you'd imagine, the first step to get our new door cards on is to remove our old ones. And to do this on the rear door cards, there's just two screws behind the armrest. There's one screw behind the door handle, and then the rest is held on by clips. Once the old door card is off, I can get the new one fitted by just doing the same process again in reverse. Once the passenger rear door card was done, I could then move on to the passenger front door card. After the passenger side was finished, I could get on to doing all of the driver's side door cards. So once I had removed our old rear seats, I could then get the new reupholstered rear seats in.
Well, I have to say, this looks unbelievable. I am beyond happy and over the moon with how this turned out. It looks like a genuine Jazz Type R now, even in the back. The only thing that does slightly bother me is that the red on the front seats is ever so slightly different to the red we've got here. But again, in the future, that can be fixed. We can get the front seats reupholstered in this same red. So that's not a problem, but I am just so happy. I mean, it looks like a Jazz Type R, this car, it just keeps on getting better and better. So I've now finished fitting all of the modifications that I planned on fitting to the Jazz in this video, but now we can move on to addressing the big issues. At the beginning of this video, I said, I think I've made several serious mistakes when doing this engine swap, which might mean I have to redo the whole thing. So what was I talking about there? What have I done wrong? And what do I plan on doing to fix these issues? So I think I'm gonna start with the small problems and gradually work my way down to the big problems. The first issue I've been experiencing is to do with this, which is the standard Jazz throttle cable. Now, functionally, there is nothing wrong with it. It does work fine, but this throttle cable is not meant for this engine. As you can see, when it's fitted, it kind of comes over our rocker cover, which I think looks pretty gash. So the plan is to get a longer throttle cable, route it all the way around the engine, and then we will have a nicer looking engine bay. And to do this, I've bought a secondhand EP3 Type R throttle cable and also a brand new throttle cable bracket. So fitting a new throttle cable on the Jazz with this engine in is actually surprisingly easy. All I had to do first was remove the old throttle cable bracket and then I could fit the new one. Then I could go into the driver's side footwell and disconnect the throttle cable from there. The next step was to pull the throttle cable out through the driver's side footwell. And then because the EP3 throttle cable is longer than the Jazz one, we can feed it through the bulkhead into the engine bay and around the engine into our new throttle cable bracket. That is one EP3 Type R throttle cable successfully fitted to the Jazz and it works and it looks way better. That is the only small problem that we can fix in this video though. The rest of the problems, instead of, instead of me explaining it, let me show you. So if you have a look under here, you can see that we've got a bit of an oil leak coming from the front cover. So as you can see on the drive shaft there, very oily, bit oily there, very oily here. Not ideal, but that is not where the bad news ends. If you have a look at that pulley, that is our water pump. And if I can get the right angle on it, I can show you that that pulley, when going around corners, crashes into the chassis leg, that pulley. You can kind of see where it hits. So what on earth are we going to do to fix these problems? Well, the good news is that in theory, these issues aren't too difficult to fix. With the front cover oil leak, all we have to do is take off the front cover and reseal it properly and put it back on so it doesn't leak any oil. As for the water pump pulley, all we have to do is make a little hole in the chassis leg and weld it up, something called a chassis notch, which if you guys have been watching the whole series, we've already done on the passenger side chassis leg and the subframe. So they're not too difficult to do, but the big bump in the road is that both of those problems require the engine to be back out in order to fix. I wish I could tell you that is where all of the problems end, but it's not. Because if you guys remember in part two of fitting this engine into the car, I fit a new timing chain with the goal of making the engine more reliable. Now, whilst we did get the timing right, I fit a 70 quid non-genuine timing chain to this engine, which is a big no-no. I learned that after the fact. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to redo the timing chain as well, 
with a genuine Honda timing chain. And whilst I'm at it, I'm going to get a genuine oil pump chain as well and swap that over. All of these issues would have been a right pain if I wasn't already planning on taking the engine out. And that is the plan. It's been the plan ever since installing the engine. I knew it would have to come back out because as all of you know, I've said it loads in my videos, the goal with this build is to make it just like my dream white on white JDM Honda Civic Type R, which is painted in championship white. Now I was thinking we could wrap it, but to make this car look like a genuine Jazz Type R, it needs to be painted. And to do so, the engine needs to come out. So we can fix all of these issues when the engine's out for paint. So it's not that big of a deal, but it is still something I will need to address. And it is definitely adding to my workload. So if you guys have been enjoying these videos and you want to help support the channel, make sure to click the like button below this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Doing so is completely free and it massively helps me out as a creator because it means I can get sponsorships, it means I can get ad revenue, and it means I can keep doing these builds because I love doing it so much. With all of that said, I'll catch you guys in the next one.